Hello everybody! Hello, Paul here. First of all, <clears throat> welcome back. I hope everyone had a fantastic holiday. I'm feeling very calm at the moment, mostly because this is pre-recorded footage. Now, let's think back a little bit to the episode that came out before this when we were trying to beat the dragon and things didn't quite go our way and I may have gotten a little bit upset. It's okay. It's okay. Now, it gets worse. It gets worse later because then my live commentary will kick in and you'll know exactly when that happens, I assure you. I'm normally not a very ranty person, but the fact that the game robbed me not once but twice and the game is so broken that in order to get the ending that I was after, you've got to be really specific. Alright, so here's the ending. This is something we've already seen. And I figured out a couple of secrets to beating the dragon. And they're all kind of bullshitty. You don't really spend a lot of your time attacking the dragon, so like head on. You spend most of your time babysitting the other two. And even in this case, Gort did not survive because Gort, well, Gort sucks. Gort, Gort really sucks. But Toro is still around. All right, so here's our final score and blah de blah. And all right, so I went back and did it again. And. Uh, Nothing. And, and Toru lived this time, which is great, so that's canon. But nothing else happens. Why don't I win the Chief Thief contest? What happened? Did I miss something? Oh, that makes me really angry. As a, as many of things in this game that has made me angry, that is number one. Robbing me of the Chief Thief ceremony at the very end? No matter if I become king or not, doesn't matter. They're supposed to be at the end, this little celebration where you go down to the thief hall and you are announced as chief thief and Ferrari is pissed off because he had the nightingale or the, the blackbird, whatever. The point is, at the end of everything, Spielberg, Samaria, <coughs> Tarna, Mordavia, all the way to here, my goal was to become a chief thief and the game robbed me of it. Straight up robbed me of it because... It's broken! It's goddamn broken! I don't care what anyone says, I don't want to hear any defense of it. While there are a few good times to be had, it's unforgivable. The bugs that were still left in this game, design information, everything, just, there's, there's too much. I know this game was rushed, a lot of things got cut, a lot of things were working against this game, and for what it was, when it got pushed out, it was playable. It was fine. But it was not play tested. It was not play tested enough. And therefore, it leads to an extremely frustrating conclusion and frustrating experience. Now, let's talk a little bit about that ending boss dragon battle thing. Okay, now look. It doesn't matter if you're a wizard or a fighter or a paladin or a thief. That battle goes exactly the same way no matter what. So if you're a thief, what has no strength and a bunch of like sneak, agility and all that kind of great stuff, what are you gonna do? There's nothing you can do. And that poison dagger which you get as a tool to kill the dragon at the end does nothing. You saw me throw it at him, it takes off like a little tiny, little tiny. It doesn't register the hit. And even at the end where it said deeds left undone, use the poison dagger on the dragon or whatever, it doesn't matter, it doesn't count. It could take it down to half health for all we know. It could make the battle so much easier, but it doesn't work like so many other things in this game. If you're a magician, fine, you can stand back and spam spells at it or whatever. Now, I did figure out how to keep Toro alive a little bit. Goro was already gone at that point. I don't give a fuck about Goro. But I wanted Toro to live because Elsa was so unhappy. So you basically force feed him health potions. And he's like, ooh, thanks. So we'll, we'll sort of bank them up. So I gave him like 20 of them. And he used one every 15 seconds because the guy would not move in out from in front of the dragon's fire. And by the way, I used the, what was it, the fireproofing potion on myself? Did nothing. Absolutely jack shit. Well, guys, as the credit rolls, that's it. I wish this could end on a better note, but the entire series is over. That is the last game in the series. Spielberg, Sh Shapir, Tarna, Mordavia, Heroes of Five Lands now. Oh, we can buy the official soundtrack, how nice. 
yeah, the soundtrack was really nice, although repetitive, because you hear the same musical tracks every 10 seconds. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break right now, and I'll put my ending thoughts at the end of this. I'll put together a nice little montage, and I'll put together my thoughts. But right now, I... <clears throat> I'm really upset. I really am. This game makes me so angry. And not even, because I was drawing a parallel a little while ago about the Mask of Eternity versus this game, and which one was worse? Mask of Eternity by far, but Mask of Eternity, I actually found myself kind of enjoying after a while. I would actually seek out the play. It. Sitting down to play Quest for Glory Dragonfire was a chore. It's work for me. The editing, I love. The photoshopping, the, the title card sequence, I love it. It's my favorite part, but actually sitting down to play the game was misery. Absolute misery. I hated it. I don't like it. I'm sorry. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, I don't like it. But anyway, I'm being very negative right now. I'll come back in one second. We'll put my thoughts together at the very end, okay? Ugh. And that was <laughs> the end of November, I think. So we, I took a little bit of time off, and then I went back and recorded again with, I, I just, I had a hunch. Okay, and at the end, you know, no spoilers, everything does work and everything is fine, so we can end the series on a positive note like I really wanted to. Now, what you have to do is I did win the Chief Thief contest because I have the Blackbird, right? That should be fine. I went down to the Chief Thief place and I showed Arrestes the Blackbird and everything was great. He gave me the little wink and a nod. It's, it's cinched, right? Cool. So in preparation for the battle, I went upstairs to my room and I put away all the stuff I don't need, like all the helmets and extra swords and, and the, whatever I don't need. It was great. But that included the Blackbird, which I assumed because was in my possession, I didn't need to worry about bringing with me to the volcano where the dragon was. Why risk it? You know, if if I die and I get incinerated by dragon fire, then the Blackbird's going to melt and then it'll be gone. You know, I will have been responsible for destroying what may be some sort of holy relic. I don't know, but it's worth a lot of money, and I don't want it to die. I'd rather Ferrari have it. I don't want it to be scorched earth policy on the Blackbird. So I went back and fought everything again, and by the time I went back, this is my, like, my 40th time trying to fight this dragon, everything went great. It was smooth and wonderful, and I had to go all the way back and go through... Uh, the, the mansion again and fight the Minotaur and then get zipped away and do the first phase of the dragon battle, blah, blah, blah. Now, I read the comments also, and, and a lot of people said, and it might have just been one person, but maybe a lot of people, said the throwing dagger, the poison dagger, may have worked. That if you didn't throw it, you went up and actually jabbed the, da jabbed the dragon with it. And that would have taken, like, a huge chunk of health off. But I tried that in a previous attempt, and it didn't do anything. It just treated it like a normal dagger. It took off, like, a, a, mil a micrometer of health, and that was it. And I figured out also the ideal way to fight the dragon. If you're a thief, bring literally 80 throwing daggers. They don't weigh all that much. And just stand over there and just wail, 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 wail. Spam, 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 spam. Give... Toro, that Minotaur axe, that's super important. You need that. And while they are together pushing up the, the pillar, putting it back into position, give them all the health potions you have. All of them. Because you don't really need them. Because you can just go up there and ask Arana if you saved her to give you a heal. It takes a while. But if you have the fireproofing potion on, you should survive long enough to heal yourself in any conventional way. So that, that worked well. And then when the dragon lands, and I can go over there and stab it a couple of times, and he flew away. The whole thing, literally, the whole battle took me two or three minutes. It was great. I'm, I'm good at it now. It's wonderful. So here is my canon ending. The first time I went through, I thought maybe I didn't get the chief thief because I decided to be king, and you can't be a thief and a king at the same time. So I said, okay. So I went back and did it again. And this time I rejected to be a king so I can live out my life being a free adventurer and the chief thief. Speaking of which, here we are! Well, mateys, it be the time to say the name of the next chief thief. It were a tough battle, and the bitten stakes were high. But it all comes down to the Blackbird. The person with the real Blackbird be leader of us all. Then it seems that I am now the chief thief of Silmaria. 
I have the black bird. Drop your anchor, me bucko. There's more than one black bird. Only the real one will do here. I have the real one. I've made certain of that personally. Oh, did you now? Then I think you should be checking your bird again. What are you talking about? This is... No. He brought it with him. It cannot be. His priceless artifact. He brought it with him. It's in his pocket. Oh, the new chief thief of Salmaria will be the one with the real Blackbird. Oh, so you outwitted Ferrari. You are such a clever man. I have no idea why Noir is here or why... Oh my... Oh, no. Take your face out of there. Uh, because I didn't romance... I barely even talked to her. Hmm. <laughs> It seems that you've gotten the better of me this time. I'll know not to underestimate you the next time we deal with one another. Congratulations. The Thieves' Guild will be very interesting with you as chief. I look forward to your leadership here. You did it. You won. And... That was mean. You did it. You won. And, that, and that's, the, that's the real ending. Doesn't really end on the big bang I was hoping for, but it's better than what happened previously. So now that I think it's a couple of days later, it's the day after Christmas, actually, and more holidays were fantastic. Thank you for asking. Um, and now that I'm in a much better mood, I'm in a better place, and this game has been far, far behind me, I think I can more fairly sum up my thoughts. Okay, so Quest for Glory 5 Dragonfire, definitely the black sheep of the series. Um... A little bit more uh, too ambitious, I think, is a, is a safe term. It fell under the same problems that Mask of Eternity did because they were trying to do too much at once. And well, no, that's not quite fair because Mask of Eternity was kind of ripped out of their hands after a while, so they kind of lost creative control. That's not that's not quite fair. So Dragonfire, they there there may have been budgetary problems because I believe this game also did come out sort of late in Sierra's career during the downfall. And their, their switch over to 3D was not really a um, uh, a seamless transition. There were a couple of good early 3D games that they did. I wish I could remember the name of it. I think it was called Stellar 7, which was sort of a, uh, not a space shooter, but you were like, a, you were in space, but you were a tank and shooting around and pew-pewing all over the place. And that was great. I still remember a lot of things about that game because there was Gear Jackson and and there was references to it. And if you had the, I think it was the Space Quest Five uh, handbook that came with the game. Uh, when you were looking at all the different planets you can go to, I think there was a picture of Gear Jackson or Gear Jackson or whatever up at the very top corner, kind of keeping an eye on things. So that, that's a, that's you know, a little insider information. So now. It does give you the option to export Sneaky Feet yet again, but there's nothing else we can do with him because there was no canonical sixth game. So it looks like they did leave themselves open for a sixth game, but never it never really came to fruition because well, Sierra was, was gone. There was no more call for it. Uh, actually, that reminds me. I'll come back to my thoughts on, on Dragonfire in a sec, but speaking of canonical games... Lori and Corey Cole, this is the whole reason I started this series in the first place was to call attention to Hero U, Rogue to Redemption, which is Lori and Corey Cole's kickstarted program as a new Quest for Glory game. And as a backer, I got a chance to play a couple of the, the demo levels. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to stream them. I guess I could show them to you at some point if you guys really want to see what's going on behind the scenes and what the new game is going to look like. It's actually kind of cool. It's a little bit more of a puzzle game. Not really action-oriented from what I've seen. Actually, no. No, I take that back. It's It's been a while since I played the latest build, but uh, it, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It's it's uh, kind of puzzly, and then I think there's kind of like almost like a Diablo kind of uh, a feel for it, but it, it is centered around being a thief character, which I am excited for, because this can be the literal continuation of Sneaky Feet's career. Or, no, 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 wait, 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 even better, a prequel. I think it's a prequel, because this is when you're in university. This is before, I think, you even take the Famous Adventurer's Correspondence course, and it might be a completely separate story altogether. Let me know what you think. I don't know. I gotta put this together. I, I, I gotta think what's going on. Anyway, going back, Quest for Glory 5. It's a dragon fire. Uh, 3D graphics, that was great. It actually looked really good for the time. I think I told the story at the very beginning, but when I first got this game, my computer could not run it. 
I was running, I think it was back in, what, Windows 95 days, I want to say. I, I, I don't know. But I couldn't run it. I, it was probably more of an operating system issue than anything else. And this is before the days of DOSBox. Uh, but actually, no, it was designed for Windows 95 or Windows 98, NT, one of the two. Three. I can't count. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't run it. So I, I played it. Maybe two or three years later, it was sitting in a shoebox for the longest time. Then I got a computer that can run it. I'm finally able to play it. And I remember having a lot of fun with it. I like that there is a lot of open-endedness. There's a lot of exploration. A lot of attempted or implied exploration. Because there's only a few extra places that you can actually go. But there are a lot of ways to solve problems. Just like the other Quest for Glory games. Lori and Corey Cole were really heavily involved in the project. They were the writers and the designers. I'm pretty sure I may have to take a closer look because this game is so much larger than the ones in the previous. They may have had to kind of share responsibilities across uh, across the board. Um, let's see. I, I said a lot of bad things about the game. So let me think about a couple more good things. Um, a lot of side questing. That was that I don't even think I was really used to as a gamer back then. I was used to a very linear storyline or if you had a side quest then it was just like a little blip on the radar and it was gone. But the side quests in here, I mean, the, the Blackbird, for example, the whole Blackbird thing is considered a side quest. It's not part of the main story. If you don't want to get the Blackbird, don't get it. It doesn't matter. But if you want the extra points or you want the special ending, if you want to be a chief thief, go right ahead. I think there are some uh, quests involving, if you're a wizard, you have to do a side quest, just like in Quest for Glory 3, to get your wizard staff. Which would make your life a lot easier. Um, oh god, I can go on for so long about the pros and cons of it. But the long and short of it, uh, Dragonfire, not my favorite game in the world. Not my favorite Quest for Glory game. If I had to rank them just off the top of my head, uh, let's see, counting the SCI remakes that we've been playing instead of the text parser ones, my favorite, honestly, as much as I love 4, would probably be 3. I think Wages of War is actually one of my favorite Quest for Glory games. I think it's a, I have a soft spot for it because it was one of the first ones I played. A bit buggy, nowhere near as buggy as 4, which falls into the number 2 slot. I love Quest for Glory 4 so much, mostly because of its narration. I remember the, the memories of me playing that game are, are vivid. I loved it. And um, let me see, after that, uh, Quest for Glory 2 or 1... Quest for Glory 1, because it's the original. It's one of the very first DOS games I ever played. The very first adventure game I ever played. It was over a friend's odd next. It wasn't even a friend. It was like staying with a, a friend of my parents, and they brought me upstairs to you know, shut me up and show them this cool computer gizmo, and there it was. So by default, oh gosh, between 2 and 5. I'm honestly going to put 5 above 2. I think I like Dragonfire a little bit more than I like... Um, what was it? Uh... um a trial by fire. I, I think I do. Not by much, but by a little bit. Because 5 tries a little bit harder. Uh, 2 always kind of flummoxed me because it was so confusing. There was a lot of uh, timed events, which is why I never really liked the Lara Bow series. Either one of them, because you have to be in the right place at the right time. It's, re it's memorization is what it is. So if you really want to know what's going on, you've got to be at the right place at the right time and know where to be. you got to hide in the clock so you hear this conversation or be out this hole in the wall at such and such a time on such and such a day. You can, of course, beat the game just by blundering your way through it and doing it with your brain. Anyway, this is not a lot Lara Bow. This is about Quest for Glory 5. Anyway, I'm going to do a summation video in a little bit and kind of talk about the entire series and do a little rundown of Sneaky Feet's entire career, but that'll be in a little bit. You'll also have noticed that we have gone a bit beyond the 15 minute mark because now my copyright strike is over. I'm no longer punished or handcuffed, so yay, we can look forward to some longer videos. But for now, that, my friends, is the end. The end of the Quest for Glory canon series. There's a couple fan games we can talk about. And another reason that I did this series is because at some point, you guys know the the King's Quest retrospective. If not, uh, check it out down below. I'll put it in the comments. I'm going to, I want to do anyway, and be patient with me because it's going to take a while, a lot of research, a Quest for Glory retrospective. Front to back, everything in between. And I'm hoping that if Lori and or Corey Cole could be a part of it and kind of give me some insider information, 
I, I, I want that. I really want that. I got a little bit of insider information for the King's Quest one. I got the little book. Uh, the compendium. Anyway, that's a story for another time. And there's also... I'm going through with the Quest for Glory cookbook idea. We're taking all the recipes and all the things that we've eaten and all the Quest for Glory games and I'm going to make a cookbook out of it. I was going to make a video out of it, but... I think having a cookbook is going to be a little bit uh, better. All right, and also in the spirit of Lori and Corey's Cole's puns. All right, here's what I'm thinking about for the title, okay? And if you guys give me your ideas, but it's going to be the Quest for Glory cookbook, A Hero's Journey. But the hero is spelled J-Y-R-O because you don't pronounce it gyro like the sandwich. It's heroes. So it's a hero's journey. Ah, ah yeah, you, you love it. You know you love it. Anyway... This has been Paul. This has been Quest for Glory 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I will see you in some more Quest for Glory related videos. And there's also King's Quest Chapter 2 coming up real soon. And as always, good night, Jelly Beans. Good night. <laughs>